Are you living to work or working to live? Let's break down how to align your career goals with your personal happiness to get the most out of life. Hi, I'm Nyla Pond. In today's video, we're getting into the uncomfortable career questions. We will work on trying to figure out how important the upward mobility for you is. Do you need to push harder at work or should you slow down and enjoy your life a little bit more in order to feel fulfilled? Part one, self-assessment. Let's start with the importance of your career. Understanding your personal career aspirations is vital. Here are some questions that might help. What do you want out of your job? Are you aiming for upward mobility or are you happy where you're at right now? Let me be clear here. While the society has not yet quite caught up with this concept, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being satisfied where you are. You don't have to continue climbing the ladder if you're satisfied in your current position. Next, ask yourself, what truly drives you in your work? Is it the excitement of new challenges, satisfaction of a job well done, or perhaps the stability and security that comes with your current role? Ask yourself, are you happy with your current day-to-day -day tasks? Do you feel reasonably valued and appreciated at work? And is there a clear path of growth that aligns with your current goals? If you find that you're constantly frustrated or unfulfilled, perhaps it is time to reassess your career path. If it's the organization, try looking for a similar position with a competitor. If it's the day-to-day -day tasks, perhaps a different role. On the other hand, if you're generally content and motivated, perhaps you are on the right track. Notice how I said generally content. I personally believe that there's no such thing as the perfect job. And yes, that includes the one where you work for yourself. There are plenty of jobs where we are satisfied for the most part, but nothing is 100% perfect. Just make sure it works for you, not whether it's all sunshine and rainbows all the time. Setting your future career goals can help you see whether you're on the right path. Write down your short and long-term career goals. Do you want to master a new skill, take on a leadership role, transition into different industry? Next, let's break down the concepts of living to work versus working to live. Living to work. You are someone who prioritizes your job over your personal life, often working long hours and striving for career advancement. Your job is a central part of your identity. You spend long hours at the office, bring work home, and frequently think about work, even on personal time. When it comes to choosing family and friends versus an obligation at work, you'll likely choose the obligation at work. While this can be fulfilling, especially when you love what you do, it can also lead to burnout and strained relationships. Ask yourself, are you sacrificing your personal happiness for career success? Are you missing out on important life events because of work commitments? In the beginning of my career, I declined a free trip to Italy with my family, all so I could stay and work my retail job. Yeah, I see you cringing behind the screen. I'm cringing too. Working to live. You are someone who prioritizes your personal life over your job. You work primarily to support your lifestyle and personal happiness. Your job is a means to an end. You clock out on time every day. You rarely think about work outside of office hours. You spend more time on hobbies, family, and friends. When it comes to a choice between working extra or enjoying some relaxation, you're more likely to choose relaxation. This tends to be a more balanced and fulfilling life, but it can certainly limit career advancement if you're not fully engaged in your job. Are you satisfied with your current level of career success? Do you feel like you're missing out on professional career opportunities? Where do you fall on the spectrum? Remember, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's all about finding what works best for you as it is your own unique situation. Part two, working harder for a promotion. Let's talk about what it takes to work harder for that promotion. If you've decided that career advancement is important to you, it's time to set clear goals and create an action plan. Setting clear career goals is the first step. First, define your long-term career vision. What do you ultimately want to achieve in your career? This could be a specific position, a certain level of expertise, or even a broader impact you want to make in your industry. Break down your vision into smaller, achievable goals. You choose whether you want to set yearly, quarterly, or even monthly goals. For example, if your goal is to become lead in your department, Department. Smaller goals may include taking on more leadership roles, completing relevant training, and building a strong network within your company. Set SMART goals. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-bound. This framework helps you create clear and actionable steps towards achieving your goals. What are some benefits of upward mobility? Increased salary. Higher positions typically go hand-in-hand -hand with higher pay, which can provide financial stability. Greater status and recognition. Moving up the ladder often means more respect and influence within your organization, which can be a incredibly gratifying and offer further opportunities. Personal and professional growth. As you take on more responsibilities and challenges, you also develop new skills and gain valuable experiences. This growth can be quite fulfilling and set you up for even greater success in the future. To achieve your career goals, you're going to need a solid action plan. Here are some strategies to improve your performance at work. Exceed the expectations in your current role. Deliver high quality work and go above and beyond within reason in your current job description, which can help you stand out to your superiors. Be careful not to bite off more than you're willing to chew later. The further above and beyond you go, 
the higher the expectations will continue to grow. Seek feedback and act on it. Constructive criticism can help provide insights into areas where you can improve. And better yet, show that you're receptive to feedback, which shows commitment to personal growth. Take on additional responsibilities. Volunteer for new projects and tasks. Again, within reason, this can showcase your initiative and readiness for a higher position. As you can imagine, networking is crucial for career advancement. Building strong relationships within and outside your organization can open doors to new opportunities. It can also provide support as you navigate your career. Continuous learning is another aspect. Stay updated with the current trends and new developments within your field. This could be through formal education, attending industry conferences, or even just reading relevant articles and books. Seeking mentorship can also be incredibly beneficial. A good mentor can provide guidance, share their experiences, and help you avoid common pitfalls. Don't be afraid to reach out to someone you admire and ask for their mentorship. The worst they can say is no. Implementing these strategies will help you on your way to achieving your career goals and securing that promotion. Remember, it's all about being proactive, continuously improving, and building strong relationships within your professional network. Part three, slowing down and enjoying life. Now let's talk about the importance of maintaining a healthy work work-life balance. Maintaining a healthy work-life balance is crucial for your mental well-being. Here's why. Reduced stress and burnout. When you constantly push yourself at work without taking time to relax and recharge, you risk experiencing burnout, which can lead to serious health issues like chronic stress, anxiety, and depression. Studies have shown that overworking has a detrimental effect on mental health. For example, a study by World Health Organization found that working 55 hours or more per week is associated with a 35% higher risk of stroke and a 17% percent higher risk of dying from heart disease compared to working 35 to 40 hours per week. These statistics highlight the importance of setting boundaries and taking time for yourself. Improved mental health. When you take time for activities you enjoy, it can reduce anxiety and improve your overall mood. This, in turn, can make you more focused and productive when you're at work. Enhanced relationships. Spending quality time with family and friends fosters stronger connections and provides emotional support, which is essential for your well-being. Engaging in activities you love can bring relaxation and happiness into your life. Here are some ways to get started. Identify your interests. Think about what activities make you happy and relaxed. This can be anything from painting, hiking, cooking, or even gardening. Set aside regular time for hobbies. It's important to make these activities a priority. Even dedicating 15 to 30 minutes a day to something you enjoy can make a significant difference in your overall happiness. Explore new activities. Trying something new can be exciting and provide a fresh perspective. You might discover a new passion you never knew you had. Here are some ideas to get you started. Creative painting, writing, or music. Physical, yoga, hiking, or dancing. Relaxing, reading, meditation, or gardening. Personally, I have several hobbies that I jump between. Some days, I spend time art journaling. Other days, I dance around in my kitchen. And on nicer, warm days, I enjoy gardening outside. I don't commit to one hobby. Although committing to one hobby is not a terrible idea either. Experimenting with hobbies is fun. Just because you don't enjoy one doesn't mean you're doomed to not enjoy any hobbies. Try it out. Incorporating hobbies into your routine can significantly enhance your well-being and help you maintain a healthy work-life balance. Remember, finding joy outside of work is just as important as achieving success in your career. Part four, personal decision-making. Let's take a moment to assess your priorities and help you make an informed decision about your own career path. To get you started, let's go through a quick self-assessment to determine what matters most to you. List your top five priorities in life. These could include career, family, health, hobbies, finances, or anything else that is important to you. Compare the importance of career versus personal life. Consider the following questions. What brings you more fulfillment? Achieving career goals or enjoying personal time? Which areas of your life are you currently neglecting? What changes could help you feel more balanced and satisfied? Once you've assessed your priorities, it's time to make a decision. Here are some tips to help you make an informed choice. Start by listing the pros and cons of focusing more on your career versus your personal life. This will help you visualize the potential benefits and drawbacks of each path. Consider the long-term impact of your choice. How will it affect your health, your happiness, and your relationships in the future. Feel free to discuss your thoughts with trusted friends or mentors, although you don't have to. Sometimes an outside perspective can help provide valuable insights and to help you see things more clearly. Finally, consider a trial period. You don't have to make a permanent decision right away. Try focusing more on your work than your personal life for a set period of time. See how it feels. Make it a month, maybe two. Pay attention to any changes in your stress levels, your happiness, and your overall well-being. Remember, there is no right or wrong answer. It is all about finding what works best for you. Finding the right work-life balance is a personal journey, and there is certainly no one 
one size fits all. Take the time to assess your priorities and experiment with different approaches. If you need help to get started, I have a guide to help you on your personal journey. I'll have the link down in the description. Share your thoughts in the comments. Are you living to work or working to live? Remember, it's okay to prioritize your happiness and well-being over relentless pursuit of career success. This video is a part of my series, Become Happy in 10 Days or Less. Check out the description for previous videos. And that is all for today. Thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Remember, keep glowing and stay inspired. I'll see you next time.